Hey all you Slashaholics, welcome back to Slash Sisters. I'm Slash Sister Jen. You are co totally right. That is a whole lot of stuff to say. <laughs> I, I, I'm really starting to see now why Ross had such a hard time. <laughs> Sorry, this is Ross Marquand, and you're watching Slash Sisters. Sorry, it's hard to say. You're watching Slash Sisters. And I'm Slash Sister Hallie, and we want to welcome you back to our little channel for horror movie reviews by horror movie fans. It's us! You know, on, on occasion, every, every Friday at least. Yes, yes. And if you are new here, hi! Welcome! Hello! We do uh, just got a whole bunch of hair in my mouth. My God, quit attacking me. Uh, we do all kinds of fun horror stuff here, and apparently I just act like a... And that job ball. Yeah, no, I mean, I, how is that different from any other day? Though? It is I mean, not. Seriously. This is the, when you, what you see is what you get here. <laughs> but we want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you stay up to date with us and all yeah. our videos. Yeah, I, I did. I did notice that we got uh, a couple new subscribers uh, in the past few weeks. So that, that uh, that's kind of cool. Heck yeah. Um, today we are going to be dipping our toes into the infected water with our review of the 2002. Would you say it's a cult film? I mean, it did spawn two sequels and a remake. I think it was trying to be a cult film. Uh, I yeah, agreed. Uh, but from the directorial debut from Eli Roth, that is Cabin Fever. Yes, uh, a truly disgusting, gross film um, that was actually inspired by Eli Roth's real life experience from developing a skin infection while he was in Iceland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, was, I was reading that yeah, uh, yeah. this morning. So I was like, <laughs> wow. Uh, but not only did was he inspired by that, he was very heavily inspired by Evil Dead. Yes. In and fact, so much so, when I was watching clear. the credits uh, uh, this morning when I watched it, uh, there are two people in the credits that are listed as Shemp, Shemp and Big yeah. Shemp. I know, I saw that. I saw that listed on IMDb when I was scrolling through it, too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that director and writer and producer of this film, uh, as we've said, is Eli Roth in his directorial debut. Yep. So uh, let's find out if it's a crime to kill if we're only sinking deeper and love can't stop the fever. Okay, Spencer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Quoting Iceman Kills. Again. <laughs> Uh, the film begins with Henry, the hermit, finding his infected and very clearly uh, fake dog. Yeah. Very clearly uh, fake and very, and very clearly dead, dead. Like, dog. how do you not see that that dog is dead? Right. Uh, I don't understand how I didn't see it, but yeah, he's basically trying to, like, wake the dog up with a <laughs> dead rabbit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, while inspecting the dog, he lifts the dog's leg up and is sprayed in the face with the dog's infected blood. Which... Question. Yeah. He infects the water supply. Yes. How does the dog get infected? I don't know because they they actually they talk, talk about, about the it. they talk about all the animals being having been infected mm -hmm. later. Um, I, I know. So, in, in the... so somehow it's jumping from animal to person. Right. So, I know. Yeah. In the third one, the third one is actually literally entitled Patient Zero. Okay. Cabin okay. Fever, Patient Zero, that and uh, believe it or not, stars Sean Astin. Really? Yeah, it was a direct uh, video release. Oh, so. uh, okay. Next, we are introduced to the very same horror trope that is prevalent in so many horror films. Five college friends heading to a cabin in the woods for a week. Yeah, go figure. Uh, let's be honest here, this is a huge nod to Evil Dead. Oh, yeah. We really did it first. Hands down. Yes. Hands yes. down. Uh, the same number of friends... Same, 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 like, same ratio, ratio of, of yeah, male to female. Yep, yep. Um, staying in a creepy cabin in the woods, you know? I mean, like, yeah, it's it's obviously uh, a nod to, to the evil vibe. Although, they definitely had a nod to Deliverance, too, when the five <laughs> friends rode up to the... <laughs> yes. Yes. So, I mean, I mean, pan the Pancakes Kid is definitely the Banjo Kid from Deliverance. Let, let's face that. that right? Is, that kid Can we is agree something. upon yes, that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they stop at a local convenience store where they encounter the strange kid, known only as Pancakes. Uh, I actually think they, they do, do call him Dennis. Dennis, uh, Dennis but uh, we know every the, the fan community and everything, the horror community knows him as the Pancakes Kid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and hostile locals, including a kid who bites Paul, 
That's that pancakes. pancakes. Yes, that be pancakes. And a shop owner um, who drops some very inappropriate language until the very end of the film, and you find out why he drops that yeah. language. Yeah, yeah. But for so, now, you're like, wow. Right. What so they're the they're, fuck? they're. I watched it this morning, and I so help me God. I was like, oh my God, that joke would not fly now. No. no. What's the rifle for? Oh, that's been. There's a lot of colorful language in this film. <laughs> it's a lot. That's just that's, just that's just the first of many very odd. But that's the language. only racial slur yes. that's dropped. Yes, though. that's true. That's and true. And, and like I said, that shit wouldn't fly today. No, it sure wouldn't. <laughs> and he used a hard R too. Like there wasn't an A at the end. There was a hard R. But when, he, <laughs> but at the end he does. At use the end the he a. does use the A. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, upon arriving at the cabin, Marcy and Jeff go straight to the bedroom to Chris in the cabin. Uh, plus, we just can't have a horror movie without some full frontal nudity, right? Yeah. 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 Or oh. I would imagine that Eli Roth has a very strong belief that there should always be full frontal nudity in horror. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, there was nudity in Hostel, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, lots of it. Paul and Karen decide to go swimming in a nearby pond where Bert goes out to shoot squirrels. He says it's a fucking BB gun, it but that is, is not is, a fucking BB that gun. That is not that's a, a BB gun. That is a fucking rifle. It made the sound of a rifle. It, it looks in... No, it's a fucking rifle. Probably <laughs> a twenty two, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, I'm not super well good with weapons, but... I, I, I only am because I play FPSs. Yeah, person shooters, there you so. go. So while Bert is out walking around being an absolute jackass, ah! um, Bert's character is first off, his voice is so obnoxious. Like every time he opens his mouth, I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. What is wrong with you? Like just the sound of his voice, the way he talks, the character itself. The he, he was clearly meant to be like the stoner goofball of the group. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so while he's out, he, uh, shoots at something that is moving, which actually turns out to be Henry, the hermit from the beginning of the film. Um, and he starts freaking out when he realizes that Henry is infected with something. Henry, after begging Bert for help, falls into a ditch and Bert leaves him for dead, never speaking a word of it to his friends. Yeah. Because like he just doesn't say anything about it. This is what we do. We gloss over the fact that we fucking shot somebody. Yeah. With a rifle, not a BB gun. Not a BB gun. Yeah, if you had shot somebody with a BB gun, I could save you. Like, okay. So I accidentally shot somebody with I a mean, BB gun. I mean, but may you shot him with a fucking rifle. Maybe he was saying that it was like the size of a BB gun because <laughs> it's a small caliber round, but fucking, that was a fucking rifle. Yeah, yeah. Um, that night, the group gathers out in around a campfire and they meet... Well, first off, they start telling stories, and we get our first cameo from Eli Roth, where he plays a head in a ball return at a bowling, bowling alley. alley. Bowling alley massacre, right. <laughs> but then, Eli Roth comes out of the woods, um, and we get his second cameo. I mean, they happen within, like, minutes of each other. Right. They're, like, really, really fast. Um, but he is a character named Grimm, and he has his dog, Dr. Mambo. Eli Roth was actually supposed to play the, the Deputy Winston. <laughs> he, he was going to play that initially Winston until uh, until the actor <laughs> submitted his audition tape for that role and like Eli Roth like, was nailed like, it. <laughs> like, nope, you, that's it. You, you're him. I'll, I'll play, I'll play Grim. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, when it starts raining, they head back to the cabin and Grim leaves to pack up his campsite. Yeah. Never to be seen again. Yeah. But they kind of like expect him to be coming back. Like, they think he's he had a, the weed. And they're like, bring the weed. He literally had like just a giant bag. Like of it's, weed. it was like a duffel bag. It was a lot. It was a stupid lot. amount. I mean, I, mean, I, I admit even you have to admit that was a stupid amount of yeah, weed. Yeah, I am a pothead to potheads, potheads. Um, but yeah, no, that was way more weed than I've ever had in my possession. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> Probably more way way more weed than you've ever smoked in your life. No. No. Oh, come on. I was trying. No. I was giving you the benefit of the doubt here. <laughs> no. I've definitely smoked at least that much. Uh, <laughs> Maybe a lot more. Uh, anyways. <laughs> when they think that Henry, or that, uh, that Grimm is returning, and 
hear a knock at the door, and they go to find that Henry is at the door begging them for help. Um, again, looking even worse than he did before uh, when dipshit Bert shot him. <laughs> Bert immediately shuts the door <laughs> on the sick hermit. Henry tries stealing the group's car and begins vomiting blood all over the interior of the vehicle. It's just like blood. Just all over all the, the driver's <laughs> side door, the, the windshield, the with passenger like, door. Maybe kind of like another little nod to Evil Dead there too, with like all the, the spraying uh, of the spraying of blood, blood yeah. bodily fluids, yeah, and, or sure. viscous fluids. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, I could kind of see that. I could see that too. Um, Henry ends up approaching Marcy and Karen and Paul kind of like jumps in front of them trying to protect them and accidentally sets Henry on fire. Um, and he runs off into the woods. How do you accidentally... I mean, they. T to be fair... Be He's like, it was an accident! Well, to be fair, though, before he was, like, poking the fire at him, he was sprayed with a aerosol right. can that was probably a flammable substance. Right. right. But still, how do you accidentally set somebody on a fire? Yeah. While seeking help the next day, Jeff and Bert encounter a butcher who is straight up pissed about her hog being infected. Yeah. Which I think is, like, that scene is, like, she starts beating it up, which is, like, kind of hilarious. I love it. <laughs> um, they, and she ends up, like, like basically kind of, like, we need help, you know? Um, like, we don't have a phone. We're not from here. And she, like, brings them in the house and is, like, you know, we'll, we'll get on the radio and call for some help for you. And they end up seeing a picture of Henry. <laughs> because Henry is her cousin. It's her cousin. Yeah. Yeah. So... Next, we find Deputy, uh, Deputy Doofy. I mean, <laughs> he, he's seriously. fucking Doofy. Seriously. He it's is scary Doofy, movie. for real. Uh, but Deputy Wilson comes to the cabin on, he's on a bicycle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, he's on a bicycle, and he actually has a revolver on his <laughs> How can you take a cop like that seriously? You can't, because that cop is such a fucking jackass. He's like, hey, you guys been part... He, like, does not give a shit about all the blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. He sees this mess, and he's like, hey, man, it's all good. Don't you want to just come and party? Like, you're the party man. Yeah, he it's says party good. approximately 15 times throughout yeah. his entire appearance in this film. Um, but Paul explains what had happened the night before. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's just basically he's like, everything's cool. I'll send up a tow truck tomorrow. It's it's going to be fine. You just party. It's all going to be okay. Hey, ma'am, go back inside. Drink yeah. a party. Enjoy yeah. the party. Right, right, right. Uh, absolutely weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so he's, he kind of just gets back on his bike and rides off into the sunset. Right. I'm just like, thanks for your help, Deputy Deuce, Deuce, you know, like, really, <laughs> seriously. Uh, Paul tries comforting Karen, who is upset over the killing of Henry, which they don't know that he's dead yet. Yeah, they? no, I mean, I they, think I mean, they kind they, of they assume, assume that he's dead because he was right. on fire and ran off into the woods. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. uh, yeah, Paul, uh, decides to curl up in bed with her. Because, let's face it, he's had a crush on her since, like, the seventh Yeah, and grade. this is disgust. And she, she kissed him earlier at the pond or whatever, Right, too. right, right. So, so I mean, there, there is, like, mutual... There's precedence for it. There's yeah. mutual affection towards yeah. one another here. Yeah. Because what happens next is... <laughs> okay, so what happens next is, like, borderline sexual assault. Because she's, like, clearly not feeling well and... Uh, she's asleep. like half asleep he has her eyes closed and he starts going down to try and put his hand in places that he's in does not belong and he pays for it when he but, brings his hand back up and finds I, I, I was gonna say is it sexual assault when he was fingering her thigh and yeah I guess not he uh, attempted sexual assault <laughs> Um, yeah, when he brings his hand back up though he is covered in like disgusting Mucus, mucus blood, blood right, from right. the infection he that pulls, is clearly on her leg. He pulls the covers off of her and sees like an open wound that he was very clearly and vehemently fondling. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first one! That was the first one! It was also like first the first of many, time that, first of many. The first time that we get like a good view of what these this right. disease is doing to right. people's bodies. So they decide to lock her up out in the tool shed of all places. <laughs> 
Which is like so mean. Like, work shed. So fucking mean. A work shed. <laughs> work shed. <laughs> Um, but then they decide to uh, go over every inch of their bodies to make sure that they're not suffering yeah. from the same Basically, wounds. Basically, like, strip down and, and inspect each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, they uh, certainly do turn on each other rather quickly as soon as the infection starts like, taking over. Um, um, I, I think, uh, what is it? Um, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff's such a twat. That fucking oh my twat god! Oh. He's a twat waffle. Yes, he's something else. And yes, I I understand twat is a British term, just like I use Zed in uh, um, a couple of videos ago. Couple of videos ago, yeah. we had somebody leave a comment, and yes, I can't remember your name. I'm sorry, uh, but they said you cannot use this, you cannot use Zed unless you're from Australia or Great Britain. Why not? Because it's a, it is a British. They use thing. it in Canada. It is a British thing, apparently. They use it in I don't care. I don't Neither care. Do I do I. not discriminate against nationalities, my dear friend. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So uh, after fixing the truck, Bert, uh, Bert basically like he gets the truck going again. Uh, they've cleaned it up well enough so that there's not like infected blood all over everywhere. Uh, but then Bert ends up coughing up blood and doesn't tell anybody else, uh, trying, I guess, to prevent panic. Um, but more than anything, I think he just doesn't want to be locked up like Karen. <laughs> That's just my personal rights, but uh, so there is a heated debate about who's going to sit where in the in the vehicle, and Bert says, "Fuck it, I'm going to go get the doctor," and drives off uh, after Paul and Jeff discover that he has caught the disease. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Jeff, at this point, takes the remaining beer and fucking leaves, just bolts out of the area. He's like, "Fuck you guys, I'm taking the beer and I'm fucking gone." Yeah, because well, he he made a deal with Bert that they were only going to drink nothing but beer; they weren't going to drink water, which. Which to we be have fair, saved him because the water is infected. Right, but irregardless. <laughs> Mind you, uh, nobody actually dies from the said infection either. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. So maybe there's a cure. I doubt it, but... I mean, in well, with the third one, kind of, sort of, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Bert seeks help at the convenience store, but angers... The owner's son, Pancakes, aka Dennis, uh, who, after doing some impressive taekwondo, which, <laughs> but okay, so here the interesting thing behind his that hair, show, the way his hair like floats while he's doing, because oh, it's, it's so very good. clearly a wig. So, oh yeah, it's, it's so very good clearly though. a wig. So, good. Um, but the kid playing Dennis, Pancakes, uh, was actually a black belt. And oh really? And he, he just was like, "Look, I gotta." Well, no. Gotta. So when Eli Roth found out that he could actually do those moves, he he wrote that scene so he could show off his talent. It's so random. It is so random. <laughs> I mean, it, like I said, it's the banjo kid from Deliverance. Yeah, hundred percent for sure. Anyway, after doing the impressive, watch out, watch out, watch out, Dennis bites Bert on the hand uh, and very clearly infects the kid with his infected blood. Yeah, yeah. The kid infects himself. He shouldn't have been biting people. Well, I mean, no, but I mean, you know, what 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 an ass hat. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Bert ends up fleeing, but is chased by Pancakes' dad and two friends, which, like, okay. I love how you're calling him Pancakes. Though, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I have Dennis in the script, but yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> so, the, the like, guy, the, the tall, bald guy who, like, doesn't talk. He's, he's very much, like, a, a redneck, like, gimp. Yeah. What's with the box that he's carrying around? We never Nothing know. Nothing ever explained Well, no, because he tries to he open it. he says something about, like, I'll get the box. That might be, like, the only line that he has in the whole movie. Right, but, uh, like, when, so, like, later, when he's at the cabin or whatever, he's trying to open the box. Yeah. And, and then, and, yeah, whatever. Uh, back at the cabin, Marcy worries that they will contra- all contract the disease. Paul comforts her. And they end up having sex because, you know, you can't have just one sex scene in a horror film. You gotta have at least two. You gotta have at least two. Yeah, so, like, like this is their little, like, oh, we're all going down on a crashing plane. Let's just fuck because... Yeah, there was a whole spiel that Marcy gave him about, like, what would you do if you were on a, cra- on a plane that's going down? I'd grab the nearest passenger and fuck their brains yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So, whatever. Which so I, I, I guess... Uh, I think... But, hey, I mean, like, I'm not gonna like complain about another sex scene. Well, I mean the fact that he was like very 
very vehemently trying to get with this blonde chick. Yeah, and now she's like rotting out in the right. fucking work shed. And, and now, and, and now, and now that she's, she's still like alive. basically dead. Yeah, he's like, he decides, yeah. oh, I'm gonna fuck her friend. Yep. Yeah, Paul's not a good dude. Which is which is sad because he's played by Ryder Strong yeah. from Boy Meets World. I know, I know. And he's like the only star in this film too. Yeah. Yeah, the only known name really at the time. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So soon after, Paul ends up leaving the cabin to find Jeff, <laughs> which and he doesn't. Find yeah, Jeff. no, he doesn't. Um, and Marcy decides she's going to take a bath, and she's just like sitting there crying, bawling her eyes out. <laughs> Whilst she is uh, taking the bath, uh, which, by the way, she was completely naked filming the scene. Yeah. And the water was cold. The oh. room was cold in which she was filming it in. And then she had to be sitting in a tub, not only filled with water and shaving cream and whatever. But all the other, like, special effects The stuff special too. effects. Yeah. Because she attempts to shave her legs only to find that she is literally shaving the flesh off of her leg. The <laughs> Again, Jenny Ratching show. <laughs> Notice how this does not affect me in the least bit because gore does not bother me. Um, gore doesn't bother me most of the time, but there's whore. something about. Okay, so I have cut my legs pretty bad shaving before. I, in fact, I, gar I'm... I guarantee, I guarantee you have not cut your leg as bad. Not like as... that. Shit. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Completely off topic. Can I tell the story? Okay. <laughs> No, I guess not that bad. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, she ends up running Sorry outside for the embarrassing story, a producer. <laughs> So she ends up running outside in a panic, only to be eaten alive by Dr. Mambo. Ah, he was a hungry motherfucker, mm -hmm. wasn't he? I don't know why he was so hungry, though. Probably because he was infected with the disease and it yeah, raged nothing him. else is like eating things. Well, we didn't see the dog. Just him. We didn't see how it affected other animals, though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Paul discovers Henry body floating in the reservoir and realizes that the infection is spreading through the water supply. Yeah. After falling into the water on top of Henry's body, he is now 100% infected himself. Absolutely. I, I love after the uh, the sex scene that he has with Marcy, too. He's uh, How he just, like, assumes that, like, he's not infected. Just well, no, 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 no. He, well, like, maybe he assumed that she was infected, but he's standing at the toilet, and he pours Listerine over his man parts. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's gonna kill it. <laughs> I mean, you know, just just the shit that, you know, was in this film. I mean, different time frame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Returning to the cabin, <laughs> Paul finds Marcy's remains, or what's left of them, and Dr. Mambo feeding on Karen. After killing Dr. Mambo with Bert's gun, notice it says gun, not BB gun, uh, he bludgeons Karen with a shovel. I, I guess out of mercy at this point because she is cl very clearly dying. Why uh, he, he didn't he use rolls... the same gun to just put her out of her misery? I do not right. know. But he rolls her over and she's alive but barely, he and like her, her mouth her is like, is... like her lips and stuff are all gone, and the, you see the teeth and the, the skull, the skull coming through and everything, and like. How many damn times did he hit her? Like actually? 20 times he hit her with that damn shovel. He just didn't stop. He just went over and over and over again. Like, really, dude? You could have, like, and, very and easily just, like, taken that gun and mind and put her you, out of her misery. Mind you, like, this he's is, been this in love with her since, since they were seventh grade. Yeah. Bullshit. And he's beating her. He's li quite literally beating her to death with a fucking shovel. Mm -mm. Can mm -mm. we say overkill? Mike? Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Uh... A dying bird returns to the cabin, um, still being pursued by Pancakes' dad and his friends. Redneck friends. Um, <laughs> when he get, they, Basically, they kind of set up a trap. Um, he's sitting right inside the door. When they open the door, he sh is immediately shot. With a shotgun. Bert is immediately shot with a shotgun. But he is able to get off a shot into uh, Pancake's dad. Not his dad. His no, it dad's was the friend. friend. Okay. And, and then, the friend falls off the porch and blasts Pancake's dad. That's right. Okay. With the second, because so, yes. it was a double barrel shotgun. Yep. 
So, so yeah, it's like it was like a big, quick chain of events that happened like really, really fast. And then uh, Paul walks out and stabs old boy in the ear with a freaking. Uh, and that was the bald guy with the box that we yeah. never know what was in the box. He fumbles with the box as as Paul is coming out with the screwdriver, and it, we never find out what was in the box mm-hmm. or what it was supposed to do. Or, uh, I, Paul proceeds to kill the other two men in quick order, showing that maybe Paul is a bit of a badass, but actually he's just a psycho. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, but it's too late, uh, because if he wasn't infected before the water reservoir, he most certainly is infected after the water reservoir. Mm-hmm. And so he ends up going and looking for Jeff again, and, and tries uh, to warn him that it's in the water. Yeah, yeah. He basically kind of goes running off like, it's in the water! Uh, but ends up finding Grimm's half-eaten corpse in the cave. Which, that's why I was saying, like, why was that dog so damn hungry? He ate half of Grimm already. And then he which, went and ate... But but see, that's just it. Grimm was most likely infected. The dog ate Grimm. Hence, the dog was infected. We yeah. don't know how it affects animals. Right, right. Maybe it, maybe it's like the virus from 28 Days Later, and it raged the animals. Yeah, could be. Well, I mean, it, it seems like it started with the animals and transferred to humans. Yeah, I, I agree. Agree. But I don't. But know. we don't know how it affects yeah. them anyway. Right. Well, and it could affect every species differently too. Very true. Paul takes the convenience store's truck, and while driving, discovers that he's infected before hitting a deer. That promptly <laughs> goes through the windshield, and the only way that he can get it out of the windshield whilst avoiding hooves to the face <laughs> is by taking a shotgun and blowing the deer out of the windshield, effectively spraying, spraying himself blood all blood. over himself. Yeah. So there was a, a, a point in which he was covered in all that fake blood, and he took a walk through the woods, just in between scenes, in between takes, and everything like that. And was it can't. Girl Scouts he ran into, or just a group of girls that happened to be... I think it was a group of girls that were on, like, a field trip. Okay, okay. And he runs into a group of girls, about 10 or 11 years old, covered in all this fake blood, <laughs> and they freak the fuck out. But not because he was covered in blood. <laughs> because it was Ryder Strong. strong. <laughs> they lost their ever-loving minds. And right. they chased him. And he was basically like, yeah, well, I guess I'm never going to go for a walk like that again. Right. So, needless to say, he didn't go for walks off the set anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he uh, reunites with W.D. Winston, dipshit doofus, doofus, um, who is partying with underage drinkers. Of course. Because yep. cause that's what he's into. He's, he's into partying with underage kids. Anyways, Paul requests a ride to the hospital, um, but before, I mean, he's, the deputy's kind of like, yeah, man, yeah, I'll give you a ride, and then he uh, gets a call over the radio, radio basically saying, like, uh, there's a group of teens that, or a group of people that have went on a killing went on a killing spree, and you are to shoot and kill this person, shoot and kill any of them on sight. Wow. Uh, I mean, he doesn't, which is... Well, he, he, he can't. He can't yeah. because the uh, other people that were there in the group uh, basically beg the deputy to shoot him. Yeah. And he's like, I can't. My gun's in the car. <laughs> so, wait, now he has a car? Yeah, yeah. Now he has a car? Well, I mean, it's nighttime. You don't want to be riding your bike around in the woods in the nighttime. But still... <laughs> They didn't trust him with a car in the daytime. Why would they trust him with a car at nighttime? More shit can happen. I don't... Whatever. Paul attacks but does not kill Winston. He runs towards the busy street, attempting to hitch a ride. However, he falls unconscious and almost gets hit by a semi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a passing vehicle does end up stopping to pick him up and drops him off at the hospital. Literally Promptly like, drops his ass off like at the hospital. They don't even like take him in. They just drop him in the front front walkway like here you go I, I i love it too because there's somebody like in a wheelchair wheeling out and as soon as they see that body they immediately turn back yeah. around and, the and there's another guy just standing there like what the fuck is this right <laughs> um yeah so the doctors unknowingly request him to be transported to another medical facility um by wd winston like he basically tries to like get rid of him uh, Jeff, who has been hiding out and drinking in the woods, returns to the cabin the next day, initially crying after seeing the remains of his friends, 
uh, but becomes ecstatic when he realizes that he was the only one left alive. Yeah. Um, and then it promptly takes, uh, what would you, would you call it a, a Night of the Living Dead turn? Yes. Yes, that is exactly what I was just about to say. Like, it is very much a, a nod to Night of the Living Dead with Ben at the end getting shot by the brigade that was coming to round up all the zombies. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but he, like, puts his arms up and is immediately just, like, shot to hell. Like, there's, like, just, like, just... There's, a, what, at there. least six or seven officers promptly, like, stationed up outside the cabin just waiting for someone to come out. Yeah. He comes out and they just unload on him. And then they promptly stack his corpse up on top and of the other him. bodies and burn him. Just yeah. like just like they did in Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a nod to that movie, I mean, for is, sure. I, I didn't catch that, like, on um, my and first watch, watch through, because yeah. I hadn't watched the original Night of the Living Dead. Right. And then I watched it again today, knowing that story better, and it's just like, oh, yeah, no, oh, that, yeah. that's very clear to Absolutely. me. That's, Absolutely. Eli Roth took it from that. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> a boy and a girl are then seen getting water from the lake for their lemonade stand, um, not really realizing that a barely alive Paul is in the lake and the water is now contaminated. Actually, we don't know that he's alive. Yeah. We assume that he's dead, but if you watch the sequel, he is, in fact, still alive. Right. Which the sequel come out seven years after this. <laughs> Make us wait a little, right? Right. <laughs> the sheriff and his deputies stop by the convenience store owned by the children's grandfather, where they buy glasses of lemonade tainted by the contaminated water. Yeah. And uh, kind of in the final little scene, well, not the final scene, because we do have that one final scene that we're going to talk about in just a second here. Right. But in the final, like, kind of, like, conclusion of the film, we see a giant semi-truck labeled, like, natural down spring home, water. Down home spring, spring water. water. That's right. Um, taking off out, out of the town to go and disperse this spring water. Contaminated uh, water. Contaminated water to the rest of the country, or at least to enough people to start spreading it through the whole country, I right. assume. I don't know. Uh, but we also do get one little scene left where we circle back to the shop owner, the grandfather, who basically said that the weapon that he had hanging above the, the counter was for the... The N-words. The N-words. The, the, the black folk. Uh, we see three black folk literally walk into frame there's like a just a little snippet of hip-hop music playing for like all of about like two a seconds second. yeah and they walk in and he's like oh my and he hands him the gun he's like i polished it all up for you it looks just brand new yeah like acting like they're like best friends which apparently i guess they're supposed to be and that's what gives him the right to say the n-word nope nope uh i'm sorry you don't no. get that right mm -hmm. period white mm -hmm. people don't get that right nope don't care if somebody tells you it's okay it's not uh and that's how the film ends. The whole group is dead, or you know, I mean, presumed dead. Presumed dead. Yeah. Because I mean, we're very, we're very much led to believe that <laughs> that Paul, Paul Ryder Strong's character, yeah. is dead, laying there right. on the banks of, of the reservoir or whatever. Right. Um, but he is alive in yeah. the sequel, at least at the start of the sequel, and then he does okay. die relatively soon. But yeah, now this this infection is going to spread throughout the country. Mm -hmm. and I mean, that's which I, the assumption that we're left with at the end of this film. Which, as I as I have said, there is a sequel called um, Cabin Fever 2 Spring Fever, and then the third one is Cabin Fever 3 Patient Zero. Yeah, I've never seen either of those. Uh, you're not missing much. Mm, I see. And uh, there's a, I think it was 2016, 20... They did a remake 2018, of maybe, remake this of this one. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't think warranted Was Eli remake. Roth I don't think he was involved at all. With that okay. one at all. I'd yeah. have to I'd have to look and I'll put that down there if he actually was, but I don't think he was involved. Alright, Hallie, so what are your thoughts, final thoughts on this film? <laughs> so uh, I was initially gonna give this a bloody machete up until I rewatched. Okay. Okay. I uh I because I did have like again the Valentine effect. I'm gonna I'm just gonna call it the Valentine effect from here on. Yeah, out. yeah. Uh, I I did look back upon this with fond memories. I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the gore. I enjoyed the practical special effects that they had for it. But it is actually a terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm really glad you said that because I feel very much the same. Um, I. I the first time I watched it, even even back in 2002, 2003, I very much didn't even like this back then. 
I thought it was. Um, trying way too hard to be a cult a classic. Cult classic. Um, it was very, very much a product of its time. Like, it mm -hmm. does not age well. Um, it... it the amount of R words used, the derogatory way that, like, gay is used. Oh, that's gay. Like, I'm gonna go don't shoot, get I'm gonna me shoot wrong. squirrels because they're gay. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I was, that we were those characters' age at the same time. So, Which, back then, that stuff didn't That was totally us. acceptable. Like, the things it that came out of our mouths, like, right. holy crap. I look back on it and I'm like, oh, man. That really did capture what it was like to be in 2002, didn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, just like Valentine captured, what was it, 2001? 2001, yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, yeah, I, I'm i personally not a fan of Eli Roth. I See, think I he has like a lot Roth. of great contributions to the genre. I respect him as a, um, a, as a director, and I respect him in the aspect that he has so much knowledge of the horror genre. He really does. He actually hosted a series on AMC uh, during Fear Fest. Yeah, which uh, I absolutely for, loved For three years series. in a row yeah. called Eli Ross History of Horror. And I, it was just a very comprehensive breakdown of, I think it was, what did he do? Like he seven had, like, episodes per yeah. season and he talked about specific films. Like, uh, it was like specific genres each episode. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. the zombie genre, the slasher genre and stuff. Yeah. It was... It was really yeah, good. It was a beautiful I show. Highly recommend. Um, and like I said, I'm not really a fan of Eli Roth, but I actually really loved that. And I have to say, Thanksgiving. Have you watched it yet? Not watched it. Oh, it's good. It's, it's on my Netflix queue. It is on Netflix to watch. I'm going to be watching it's it soon. Good. We will be covering that for Thanksgiving. So. For sure. For sure. It is. Oh. I loved it. And, and, I loved it. And I, like I said, I am not a fan of Eli Roth, but damn it, he did a darn good job with that one. Thanksgiving has already got a green light sequel. Oh, right. I know. I know. Yeah, I heard. So, um, so um, yeah. yeah, so let's just shut it down for two, me as well. Two, 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 and we're going to send this straight back to the water reservoir. Get out of here. Yeah. Uh, to contaminate more people, because, yeah. you know, why, why the fuck not? All right, All right, why not? So, Hallie, what shall we be doing next? I honestly don't remember what we had picked out yet, so let's take a look. I guess I cannot remember for the life of me. Oh, oh. it's going to be a surprise for both of us. Final Destination! This is one of Amy's favorite franchises. She yep. really loves this. I mean, the nice thing about Final Destination is that it is very creative and not necessarily like super horror driven it's it's very much like a watered down horror film yeah uh, i mean the, but the, it's the something killer that, like, is people death that itself. don't really like horror movies mm -hmm. can totally get into something like this and not be like 100 percent, like, percent, having nightmares for years to come you know what i mean i like, mean it, it can't it can. i mean th think about the opening sequence from two and it still traumatizes people on the road to that this is, day. Honest to God, that is like the one thing out of this whole franchise that still sticks in my mind is that opening scene with the logs and the, oh! Ah! But that's too. Next, yep. so come back here one week's time when we dive into the wonderful world that is the final destination and see just how many people can survive death. I mean, none of us are ever do. Eventually, we all die. I mean, the the piper must be paid at some point. Mm -hmm. Yes, but yep. uh, oh. until then, be sure to slash that subscribe button and stab the like button and ring away that grave bell so you can stay up to date on all of our videos and don't get buried in the mix that is YouTube. And until next time, we will see you all in, in the, the afterlife. afterlife.